yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. So, so how do I? Uh, okay, so we're live on Instagram and live on we're Facebook. Live on Instagram. So now you should be able to go to his Facebook or his Instagram page uh -huh. and see something. I don't see it yet. Yeah, you have maybe one second. But yeah, I see it. Started a video. It's amazing. I can see me and you are mm. six feet apart. Six feet. I can are see you? you are six feet apart. Are you so sure that's six feet? It is. I'm gonna. Is it portrait or landscape for you? Uh, it is uh, landscape. Okay, cool. So my comments, I have to read sideways though. The comments yeah. aren't displaying. But you got a lot of people in here saying hi, hi, Iron. Okay, Chief. they're saying all hi. My art, you're popular. Oh, you're doing Instagram. Perfect. Are they saying hi to me or to you, Art? I have no idea. Brian Smith <laughs> says, Art Wolf, the outsider. Kathy says, hi from Portland. Hi from Portland. All right. Hello, everybody. You're getting lots of loves. 93 viewers right now. We're going to wait for one more minute so that we can officially start okay. at 5.30 Pacific. But it works. Turn your volume down. Yeah. Perfect. Technology works. <laughs> How are you doing on drinks, sir? How is the audience doing on drinks? Yeah. Rocking. This is basically happy hour, right? This is happy hour. And cheers. And cheers. So we did... Oh, we, we oh can't yeah, touch. that's what we cannot touch. Actually, cannot you touch. know, in the Russian Navy, when you uh, click glasses, you have to do knuckle to knuckle because if it goes glass to glass, a sailor will die. And that's what they believe. Okay, I think we will do it six feet apart. At any rate, I want to welcome people. Uh, on the sunniest day in Seattle since last October, we're having margaritas, and we thought we'd catch up with people because I get called a lot. People are worried about me, and I have no idea why. They think I'm going to go crazy being socially isolated, but in fact, I've been just working for the last three and a half, four weeks on a new series of videos that will launch in a month or so on our internet, but also catching up on... 70 years of neglected gardening that I have been summarily working on. So uh, I'm here with Paramal, a good friend of mine, uh, immigrant from India. And he called the other day and said, how are you doing? And I said, come on over here and find out. So welcome. Yes, thank you, Art. And again, thanks to everyone for, uh, for joining us on both Instagram and Facebook, uh, just to get us started. To make sure, I'm here with Art, but we are six feet apart. So let's just make sure we're doing that. Just to make sure we're being socially distancing by six feet apart. You can see that it's more than six feet, so hopefully we're okay. Well, I, I don't trust this tape measure because <laughs> it tells me that this is nine inches, and I just know that. Okay. Well, I have one question, a very important question, Art, from the audience. is What are you drinking? Margaritas. I... Uh... You know, I think wine and beer just takes too long to get to the point. So <laughs> tequila is what I like to drink on occasionally and alter. That is true. Well, you know, uh, uh, I can I can testify you're doing fine. I did call you just to make sure that, you know, you are uh, not going insane staying at home. Uh, knowing you for 10 years, I know you love to travel. Well, uh, you know, yeah. I, I am compelled to travel. And in fact, over the last couple of years, I think I've been home for a total of 40 days each year. So I've been now home almost those 40 days and I'm doing perfectly. Great. I love the extra time and I get I make lists of what I need to do the following day and I make up lists just so I can check the box. Wow, that's awesome. Well, I think you'd be interested to know we have people from obviously not just Seattle, from Oregon, from uh, rainy Los Angeles. Can you believe it? It's raining in Los Angeles and it's sunny here in Seattle. I'm very happy to hear there's rain in LA. I okay. think that's great. <laughs> uh, from Salt Lake City, from Japan, uh, everyone online, please do share uh, two questions, where you're dining in from and what you're drinking. <laughs> uh, especially if it's margarita or alcohol, we would love to know that. No, I mean, I think this is a great opportunity just to relax, and if people have direct questions, they want to know anything that I've got in my brain, I'm very happy to share. And as this uh, happy hour wears on, I'm sure I'll be a little more candid than normal. <laughs> well, I have one question to get started. Sure. And for everyone uh, on, on Instagram and Facebook, 
Uh, keep your questions ready because we will uh, quickly in, in a few minutes, you know, start trying to get questions from you all too. This is not meant to be just me and Art. In fact, I'm just trying to facilitate it here. Uh, although I like the limelight. I mean, it's not bad to be on camera, right? <laughs> um, is how are you dealing with uh, COVID and staying at home? I'm being very appropriate. You know, our governor... <laughs> no, our governor... What does that mean? Please elaborate. Our governor asked that people stay home at least three weeks ago. And when he announced that, I did. And we're actually seeing... Uh, the positive effects of being socially isolated. Uh, it's a terrible virus and I feel extraordinarily sorry for the people that have lost loved ones. It is something that came out of nowhere, as uh, our beloved president would say. And when I talk, I hear music. Mm. And you're right. So um, I'm basically being very careful. I've been out of my property a couple of times walking to local parks, but otherwise I'm staying home and working on my lectures and working on the garden and I'm, I'm enjoying it and the spring is coming on, the days are getting warmer, the days are getting lo uh, longer and this too will pass as famously said and we'll resume back to our normal lives. But for right now, I'm catching up on long uh, awaited uh, projects, so I'm taking a full advantage of it. So it's interesting, I didn't hear TV. I didn't hear much of TV. Are you not binging on Netflix? You know, here's a routine. Uh, make a dinner at home, which I haven't done for a long, long time. I uh, go to the hot tub to soak my own bo old bones around 8 p.m. right at Don't sunset. Don't forget to drink. Yeah. Okay. And then I go and I have been watching uh, Jack Ryan. So uh, I permit myself to watch TV between 9 o'clock and 10.30, and then I go to bed and wake up and start the whole day again. So now I've gone through Jack Ryan, and I'm now watching what everybody's talking about, which is uh, something about the Tiger Man. You know, this mm. crazy, uh, so you, in fact, you recommended yes. it. It's crazy. It is, it is crazy. <laughs> I mean, uh, just, I, I heard so much about, you know, What's uh, the Tiger? Tiger King, Tiger, Tiger King on King. Netflix. I heard so much about it, and I started watching it about uh, 10 in the night, you know, uh, last week, and I couldn't stop watching till 3 a.m. Well, it's like watching a train wreck, right? <laughs> it and is I, a train I thought wreck. I had a unique life, but boy, these guys are crazy, and they're all unique, and I don't think there's a tooth amongst them all. Well, uh, I gotta say, I lost a lot of faith in humanity after that for some time. The next morning, I had to, I had to think about, do I trust anyone? But you know, I did recover. This is why you. <laughs> this is why you recommended it to me. Okay. That is why I recommend it. Hey, one question we have from the audience is, someone loves this, uh, this uh, photograph here, and they're asking you, uh, are these all composite? And something they're not asking, which I will ask you, is this on sale? Yes, it's on sale. It's called Mosaic Command, although there's half of the faces are women, and it was an offshoot of a project I did called Tribes, which was traveling all around the world into really remote areas, photographing, indigenous cultures and specifically how they adorn themselves during ceremonial occasions mm -hmm. and so you know within that body work and I think there's 56 faces looking out at us it's just this cross-section of humanity on the planet and the beauty of humans in general and I'm just I every time I look at it every single face I remember the moment and the location and the gender and all that and I just love that image. That's why I have it on my own, own wall. But as you look around, largely I have filled my house with carvings and uh, rustic carvings and masks and weavings and baskets. Everything, everywhere I go I bring home something that reminds me of the place I've traveled to. Mm, interesting. Uh, Jonathan, any uh, any questions from Facebook that you're getting? That, uh, that yeah, we got. That is a really good margarita because that <laughs> man's name is Anthony. Oh, sorry. So that's a good margarita then. <laughs> well, I think that just proves the point that Gabriel made a great margarita that I'm already drunk, which is a compliment. So those that know, I, I've worked with Gabriel Jacon for the better part of 30 years, and he made margaritas. He's stranded in Seattle. <laughs> he's stranded, he can't get back to where he lives in Thailand, so he's been in fact making the dinners, I do the dishes, he cooks. Wow. He's Romanian by birth, he's a really good cook, and 
I suck at cooking, so I'm really good at cleaning dishes. I've got really clean fingernails. That is cool. Any 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 questions from? We have tons of questions. Okay, so many I can't even. I can't even video. figure out what to ask. Um, <laughs> well, when did you take? Hi Art. When did you take your best photo, and which one is it? Oh my! God. <laughs> I can answer that. I can. Can I answer that? Yeah. Can I answer that? Uh, well, I love answering that. Answering that. Yes. Okay. Parimal Deshpande is answering what Art took. Okay. Here's a photo I love about uh, the one you took. It's a it's in uh, Benares. Uh, it's about uh, it, it's a boat that is going towards sunrise. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my favorite actually too. I call that um, what did I call sacred, that? Sacred, sa sacred something. Oh Jesus Christ! Um, wow, I forgot. This is really a good margarita. <laughs> there you go. See, he's forgetting. <laughs> I forget names. He's forgetting his best photo. No, it's video. called Spiritual Journey. Spiritual Journey, that's you know, right. That wasn't that the right. margarita, by the way. That was 68 years. You know, at this point, our short-term memory, you have to kind of pause it and get back to people. And, you know, it's my biggest fear when I'm giving a talk on stage. I'm trying to remember details, and, and now I'm just mature enough to let go of that. Yeah. And I'll say to the audience, I'll come back to you. And like Tourette's, I'm you know, yelling out the answer. See, I let go later. of his real name long time back. I've already matured. Like, to me, he is Jonathan, you know? Like Moving it. forward. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was anyway there was there was there was here, here, here's the story. I yeah. actually not only remember the moment, but it was in 2001, and it was at the Kumela, and yeah. it was in Benares, or Varanasi, Varanasi. Uh, India, and it was this, this moment, uh, I... I actually pulled the boat up in the mud because I saw it developing. I pulled the mud boat up in the mud mm -hmm. for stability because I had to have the depth of field from the closest part of the boat all the way to the sun rising. And mm -hmm. so I asked the pilgrim to be very still. Mm -hmm. And it, it literally was a uh, religious pilgrim that came from other areas of India, but they come during the Kumela, which is this big uh, gathering of Hindus on the Ganges that happens to a greater extent every 12 years according to the yeah. alignment of the moons and the planets and to a lesser extent every six years so I do remember 2001 and it was really burned in my brain I, I really love that image it is burned in my brain too because uh, I have been to your place a few times and I felt like it was so beautiful that I felt like stealing it sometimes you know it's like so beautiful well, nobody maybe has I, ever maybe, said maybe anything as a friend, so nicely. Maybe as a friend, you know, maybe I don't have to steal it. Like, how, how about that? <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Uh, how can I deny you on, uh, in a live audience? It right? is a beautiful got, image. Uh, do check it out. But anyway, what, what we, other questions do we have? We have a question from Katie Turman. What is your favorite tequila? You know, I'm a cheap drunk, basically. <laughs> Any, t I, I do like uh, Don Julio. I, of course, I do like that. A 1942. I like the tequila that uh, George Clooney was uh, sold for a billion dollars or more. Really? Mm. Yeah. So uh, I'm a uh, I'm not a cheap drunk, but I'm a pretty inexpensive drunk. So Anything if there are any any uh, tequila makers online, maybe they can send a bottle. By the way, I was art and to me as well. I'll send you my address. I was don't forget from... Jonathan. Go ahead. <laughs> you got a question? No. <laughs> okay, I was down in uh, Guadalajara right yeah. after Christmas, and I was photographing people on the street. I bought some beautiful uh, clay uh, pots and terracotta figurines and all that. But more importantly, I went to a couple of tequila planta mm. plantations mm -hmm. and brought some home. Nice. They're long gone now. Yeah. You know, that was three months ago. You have a lot of drinking friends, I can tell. Oh. Well, <laughs> Here we well, go. they become drinkers after they have met me. Let's put it that so way. So true, so true. We got some, a lot of photo questions I, I keep okay. reading. Uh, one of them has been asked a couple times, any tips on photographing the moon? Absolutely. Um, basically, you take an exposure and if it's too washed out, re, uh, darken it, take an underexposure. But the, typically, it's a lot dark. Uh, I typically have shot that at ISO 100 at about... Uh, two hundredth of a second at f8. That's a good starting point because the moon is various brightness. You know, if it's right on the horizon, it's a different exposure than in the dark, darkest part of the night. So, 
You know, the moon, the two, what was it, last night or two nights ago was what they called the pink moon, which yeah. was rising just as the sun was setting and it was really close to Earth. And so it was really dramatic. I actually wasn't prepared for it, but I saw it from the hot tub. Always, <laughs> nice. always ready, though. Always ready. He uh, keeps his tripod next to the hot tub and the camera and then he just, you know, he's ready. Always. Yeah, we don't want to go there. Anyway. <laughs> A um, lot of curiousness about uh, any work or word on Travels to the Edge 3. Mm. You know, I think Plus that one. ship has sailed. Plus one. No, I think that ship has sailed because, quite honestly, and thank you for the question, it cost around $2 million to launch that show. And in 2008, when the uh, economy tanked, our sponsors dried up on that. But the average... Um, host of a TV show now is around 40 years old and I'm 68 and yeah I look young and I look very um, together right yes of course okay. yeah let's I'm just, let, let's just say let's just say yes <laughs> yeah yeah yes keep going but I have other projects <laughs> I want to do I'm working on seven different books I'm you know traveling the world I'm happy I'm happy not to have done or not doing the show right now it is really a lot of work. We did 28 episodes in two years, and it is a lot of work. I have to say, I have a lot of respect for the people that do TV shows. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank you for the question. Uh, I did a couple of episodes with Tales by Light, this Australian production company out of Sydney, and that's on Netflix if yeah. you dare to look it up, the first season. Uh, you know, I'm not a ham for camera, but I do like departing information uh, wherever I can. So I like to be on stage, I like to, uh, the TV show was a way of getting whatever I wanted to say out to a broader audience. And that has been honestly uh, a motivation for me, is to share whatever I learn, and that's why I've done well over 100 books at this point, and there's many more coming. So as long as I have blood in my veins and breath in my lungs, I will be producing something whether it's a TV show or a book or the latest incarnation of a, a public speech. That's great. Yeah, a lot of questions are what's next and what's what's come, what's in the plan. So you just yeah, kind of I mean, talked about year, that. But. Next year, a book called uh, either Dusk to Dawn or mm -hmm. Night on Earth. A uh, book was just published actually called Night on Earth. So I suspect it'll be Dusk to Dawn. That's it's all nice nighttime. Name. That's a nice name. All nighttime shooting. Uh, then we've got books on international wildlife in the age of man, which is the Anthropocene. Uh, then I've got books called Act of Faith, which looks at all the world's religions, I but also that. voodoo and shamanism and, you know, tribal culture. And Do you I have Hinduism in there? India? Indian faith? Oh my God. I mean, so I mean, many it's not, it's not, it's not, yeah. I've got more Hindus than India's got I mean, Hindus. You need that. I got Buddhism yeah. and Jainism and Islam and Christianity and um, all the belief systems mm -hmm. and the uh, tribal cultures. So it's going to be a rich book. Very nice. But more importantly, it's something I've never done before. So I love the challenge myself. Yeah. 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 So those are just a handful of the books coming out. A book on bears will come out. Uh, a book called Primordial at this point, which looks at beauty on earth without life without plants, humans, or animals, but nonetheless beautiful. You know, a lot of, I think, volcanic activity and heavens and stars and all those kind of things. So, yeah. That's cool. I, my belief is this. Yeah. As long as you've got a publisher waiting for a book to be delivered, you can't die. You can't die on a project. That is true. So, as I long as you've got that. a book in the work, you'll stay vital and alive. I have a question. Okay. Uh, I'm sure... It's shared by many of your audiences too. Uh, th at, at a time when everyone's at home and sort of working from home and, you know, perhaps binging on just TV a lot, how do you find how do you find the inspiration for all these? Like, how do you find the energy and the inspiration? Where does that come from? Well, geez. I wish I had some of that. Jonathan. Uh, Anthony. Don't you wish? <laughs> I know, I know. Jonathan. My, my new nickname somehow. That? It's his new name. He's will be Christian. Anyway. You know, I draw, yeah. here's, I find inspiration from my colleagues' work. Mm -hmm. Honestly.
my fellow photographers, uh, painters throughout history, yeah. any creative types I look at and I've got their books and I pour over it and if I see something that inspires me, I'll try to not emulate what they've done but take it into my own direction. And I think that's how cultures evolve. Yeah. And so I'm not unique in that. We draw inspiration from people around us. Mm. And I'm like, uh, you know, I see something and I want to do it. And I know I've inspired people. Yes. And I've been inspired, inspired by a yeah. lot of people around there. And that's why I honestly fill my house with things of other artists. It's rare that, that I would have a photograph of my own on my wall because I want, you know, Aboriginal paintings and African carvings mm. and New Guinea masks because I'm inspired by the work that they do. That's amazing. That's that's good to know. That's amazing. Any other? You're versions? getting drunk, aren't you? No, I'm actually enjoying the conversation. Oh, actually, well, actually, I have had a few sips, but I don't see you've had your margarita yet. Well, it's you have pretty much yet. gone. It's pretty much gone. Um, Lisa Driscoll is asking, when did you transition to photographing people from wildlife, and how did you approach them differently? That's a great question. Um, yeah, you know, when I first started out, I was actually shooting large format black and white photos of mountains of the Cascades and the Olympics. Seattle happens to be in between these two mountain ranges. And I did black and white, I got them up onto the walls of REI and the North Face and Eddie Bauer and these stores in and around Seattle. But as I explored the Northwest, then I got to Alaska, then I crossed the country, and after that, I started traveling overseas. My first trip overseas was really to Africa to climb Kilimanjaro, again, in the climbing uh, community. And after that, I went out into the Serengeti to look at animals. This was in November of 1980. And it was the cultures, though, the Maasai tribesmen, that was of interest to me, though I didn't expect that. And so I started photographing people early on in my career. And then one of the, probably the third book that I ever did was called Endangered People. And it was published by the Sierra Club, sanctioned by the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And I made no money from it, but I volunteered all my effort as long as they covered my expenses. And I traveled to South America, to New Guinea, to uh, Australia, New Zealand. I photographed all these indigenous cultures, the Maori of New Zealand, the Aboriginals of uh, Australia, the I knew of Japan and photographed all these people and that really hooked me. It was that connection with people that started me and then from that led to tribes which was the basis from this photograph behind me and from that I started working on other projects that involved people and probably the latest was called Earth is My Witness which was a little bit of wildlife, landscapes and cultures. So just a quick time check, we are about 20 minutes into the 30 minute ha uh, happy hour. I would encourage everyone to not be shy, ask questions you want to ask Art, you know, he's here for you. This person's um, asked this question a couple times. Okay. Yes, how, how, how do I photograph sparkles on the water from the sunlight? Well, it's a little like the moon. You first have to kind of find the gray area in the water. And that's your starting point, and you take an exposure, and if it's blowing out the highlights, the sparkles, just, it's very simple. Just a couple of more exposures under exposing until you get it to where you want. So, you know, cameras, if it's on automatic, they're going to constantly change. So I put my camera in those kind of situations on manual, and then I try to determine the, the beginning point, and if it's blown out, then I just summarily Underexposed and underexposed until I get it the way I want it. It's not a, you know, actually, I'm technically challenged. I, I feel confident and competent to talk about aesthetics because mm -hmm. my background was painting and art. Technology was always a challenge for me, but if I can learn it, anybody seriously can learn it. And so, underexposing on manual probably is the way to go with sparkles and water. Great. And if you use a very small aperture opening like f22, then all those highlighted spectral highlights might become stars, which is what I like as well. So try that. Try f22, manual exposure. Bounce up your ISO. 
if you don't have a tripod and try that. Okay? Perfect. Um, are you painting anything now or what are you doing in quarantine? That's a great question. Are you uh, painting? No, I'm not painting in quarantine unless it's the house and the house needs painting after <laughs> traveling forever. Uh, and I'm serious, what are you doing next Tuesday? Uh, I'm busy. Oh, <laughs> anyway, I started painting again and that led to the body of work called The Human Canvas where yeah. I was literally painting very elaborate backdrops 12 feet by 30 feet big and then I put humans in front of that backdrop and hand painted those humans and that became a, uh, a body of work called the human canvas which just got published last October so down the road as I become too senile and incontinent and immobile to move I will be painting mm -hmm. I have never thrown any of my paintbrushes away. That's a good idea. But you know, I think the the, uh, the connection though is creativity. Yeah. Whether it's through the photographic medium or painting, the brain needs to be able to create. Yeah. And whether you make quilts or you're a great cook or you're a dancer or you're a writer or poetry or whatever the discipline, the creative part of our brains need to be exercised. Yeah, yeah. And the people that don't have that or have n neglected that, are ones that become sedentary and they're watching TV from dawn to dusk, not dusk to dawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they tend to go away because yeah. they run out of inspiration. Yeah. So I always say and advocate in my lectures, be creative, whatever the discipline, absolutely utilize that part of your brain that needs nourishment. I have a question I just saw from on Instagram. How do you define yourself? Are you a photographer, a painter, an artist? A great human being, all of the above, none of the above, <laughs> anything else? I am the human being that has found something that I can do and make a living from it, and therefore it's not work. Mm. Even though I do this for 40 years, 45 years actually, nonstop without vacations, and my staff would attest, I don't take a day off. I'm creating, whether it's bonsaiing the trees in my garden, or painting, or photographing. I'm always creating and I love doing that. So therefore, I'm as enthusiastic today as I was 45 years ago when I first started. And that, I think, is the, the secret of life. Mm -hmm. And if you have a job that you're not absolutely you know, thrilled with, but it pays the bills, stick with that job, but then on weekends or after work, find a way of creating something that creates the passion and longevity of life because the longest lived humans tend to be the people that are creative types and i knew that true? and i heard that and yeah, i learned that I through that. studying the impressionist painters that lived in the late 1800s almost to the man or the woman they lived longer lives than the average person because they had a passion to get out of bed and get back to the easel and the paintbrush and the oil paints and they started painting and they lived like monet Claude Monet lived into his mid 80s at a time when the average person died around 48. Wow. So there you go. So you do believe, you know, icky guy is kind of do what you love and, you know, make a living off it. You know, you do passion. believe in that. The passion. word is passion. Passion. And it could be quilt making, it could be cooking, it could be anything. It could be forgetting the But it's it partly, be... <laughs> and then also tequila. Tequila. They say that people that drink tequila live about 120 years on average. So passion plus tequila equals 120 years and a lot of success is the formula. Do the math. Advice from Mark. It's right in front of you. Do the math. Get a little quoted. Um, this is a fun one. What was your uh, biggest camera catastrophe or when, when did you lose gear? Or oh, like it's what? really, and it's blazoned in my brain. Uh, Gabriel and I spent 30 uh, days photographing the American Southwest. Started in Denver, ended in San Francisco during the month of May getting up early, staying out late, shooting the natural history of the Southwest. On the day we left our friends in San Francisco and started heading, am I lisping? Can you hear a lisp? You're fine. Am I swearing my words? Fine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It. Anyway. it is meant to be happy hour. This is, what, this is the way it's not scripted. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> so We literally had no preparation for this. Go for it. On the very last day, we got up early. It was a Saturday, sunny day. We stopped 
in Japantown in San Francisco to have a Japanese dinner or lunch. And then we came back to my car and it had been annihilated. All oh. the cameras, the wallets, the clothing, everything that was in this car was gone. Plus two coolers with 600 rolls of unexposed film. Oh my God. No, expo exposed film. Expo okay. My God, I mean, it was devastating. I literally cried. I sat oh in my, my corner and cried because it wasn't anything about the cameras. It was everything yeah. about the How many the did work. you say you lost? 600 rolls. Oh my God. In a 24 or 36 or whatever the math is. It was three different, uh, it was panoramic uh, Fuji. It was, um, God, medium format. I think it was, um, I don't know. It was a brand that no so longer many exists. masterpieces lost and 35 millimeter but it was two coolers all the and it was all film and oh my god there were some shots that would have helped define my career and they all were taken never to be seen again oh my god so well, that was the, uh, that was like the second worst day of my life the first my mom's stroke mm. that was clearly the second day I'm sorry the worst that. day Mm. No, I mean, I don't even like talking about it because it was so bad. So that was, yeah, that's an honest answer. Yeah. No, it was, it's good to have. That's a that's good, honest answer. Yeah. You got any, any more questions? questions? How are we doing on time? So we are at the 30 minute. We yeah. can go a little lower. How's, how is everyone feeling about this oh. format, if you will? Give us a little about, bit of we're going, and, I've got about an inch of tequila left in here. I mean, it's we're going up in viewers. Time. We're going up, so that's yeah. good. So, yeah. I guess I have a question for the audience. Uh, happy hour with Art Wolf. Happy hour is like five to six, but it's not five to six around the around the globe. Maybe this should be called drink with Art. You know, because oh, yeah, let's yeah. just brand me as an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I think happy mean, hour is a little, a little uh, more appropriate. Okay, maybe you can redefine happy hour to be any time. Yeah, maybe I mean, everyone, everyone's loving it. It's great. Love it. So, I mean, uh, we will say this out to you. If you do love it, we'll be back next week and kind of prepare your questions as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we're work on, we'll work on the audio issue too, guys. Audio, yeah. This is the first one. This is so our, our running gun one. one, so. Yeah. What, uh, Art, I have a question. What, it's five o'clock somewhere, someone says. Uh, <laughs> plus one to that. That's a very smart and a wise person. Our question for you. What is the one thing you would want to convey to our audience, your audience? Well, I want people, regardless of where they're uh, coming in from, to pay attention to this virus and to stay the course. In other words, in... in six feet. Yeah, six feet. But I think it's natural when you start to hear news that... COVID-19 is starting to wane in certain areas that people want to get out and socialize, but you have to stay the course for another month, at least. In Washington, another month. In New York, probably another month and a half to two months before we start to see real improvement. And if you're in Africa, you're beginning. And if you're in India, it's started. Yes. So yep. it's kind of going in waves around the continent or around the world. The one thing I want to say about that is it's awful. It's an awful, awful virus. And what I would hope that would come from this is for the Chinese government to shut down the bush meat market because it really is where H1N1 came from, SARS came from China. In Africa, it was where AIDS came from and uh, Ebola. We, not, we should not be eating wild animals that come in from the bush. It's, um, it's releasing these viruses that we're, we're I mean, COVID-19 is awful, but it's not the virus that's going to wipe us out. But that could be in that yeah. chorus. So yeah. Yeah. we have to be smart about that. Yeah. Any any other last maybe a last question from the audience? Um, we're getting a lot of people. We love this. It could be called Arts Happy Hour as the new title. Okay, <laughs> so I think we're getting um, some some kind of naming branding recommendations. But yeah, uh, everyone. The other thing I would say is maybe frequency. Is it a weekly? Is it bi-weekly? Monthly? We would love to know that. Um, yeah, and uh, I think weekly for for right now. What the hell are other people doing? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. 
So we'll be back this time next week. What what day is it? It's Thursday. We can do Thursday this yeah. time. All I know is it's yeah. the warmest day since September or October. Does the Thursday time frame this time, you know, work for uh Yeah, weekly would, weekly would be great. We're getting weekly hearts, hearts, hearts. Is there a way where in you know, art you would like them to send you, uh, you know, in advance if they have a question that you want to cover? Yeah, we did get a couple people saying we wish we had the margarita recipe so we could make it beforehand to listen to, or to listen to while we're drinking the same margarita as you. Gabriel, tell us. Gabriel's too shy. Gabriel, 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 Gabriel want to come live and tell us the, the recipe. Apart, but people want to know your recipe. Gabriel's coming in. <laughs> I can hear scampering feet. You got to go on camera. Yeah, you know, the wrong, wrong thing is that I don't drink at all. So they asked me to make margarita, so uh, there it is. You have to bend yeah. over, I think. <laughs> okay. There you go, never you. will have to put up with it, and I got closer than six feet, six feet to Oh, yeah. So, so, so wash your hands real quick. Yeah, but you've been making dinner for the last month, so yeah. I don't think I'm worrying about that. <laughs> Thanks, Gav. We've all been taking well, Poor Gav, I really feel sorry for Gav. He's been trying to yeah. get home. But he's just Thailand there. is not accepting foreigners, and he, yeah. even though he lives there, he's considered a foreigner. Uh, it's a worldwide. I mean, I think this, the the negativity and awfulness of the virus is that. But if you can find a positive effect from this, is and there are many positives. Is it allows us to realize how small the planet is. Mm -hmm. That we all are humans on the planet, and we're all facing the same thing, and so. I always, and all the books I've worked on in the last, say, 20 years is about a global experience rather than an individual area. And I've always thought this is a tiny ball of a planet out there in that void of space. So all the books I wanted to do connected the Earth. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. virus is really showing us how small the planet really is. So, so true. So true on that. Very profound note. I think thank you, Art. Thank you to our audience. Thank you to everyone for this, and we will be back at the same time next week. Maybe a different tequila. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys.